What you're seeing is our robot performing 30 different everyday tasks. In this project, we taught not only these, but 1000 distinct tasks, each from a single demonstration and all collected on one robot in just 17 hours. We were crazy enough to record ourselves giving all of these 1000 demonstrations. As you could imagine, not everything went smoothly. For example, at one point, the gripper stopped working and we had to repair it before continuing with the teaching. This video shows the entire teaching process sped up to approximately 30 seconds. And right at the very end, you can see some of our friends joining us to give the final few demos and to celebrate with us. Now, let's take a step back and examine what we have achieved. We have taught a robot a thousand different tasks from a single demonstration each. Let's compare this data efficiency to some prior work. RT1 used 130,000 demos for 744 tasks. PCZ used 25,000 demos for 100 tasks. And MTACT 7,500 demos for 38 tasks. Given all these prior methods require around 200 demonstrations per task, while well, we require one per task. One may ask, how can imitation learning be so efficient? The answer to this question lies in inductive biases. However, before we get to them, we would like to clarify how we define a task. For us, a task is a single interaction between the robot or a specific grasped object and a specific target object. Despite the short horizon nature of our task definition, once the robot has learned several different tasks, they can be chained together using high-level planners to achieve complex behaviors as shown in this video, where the robot chains six different tasks that it has learned from a single demonstration each to rinse a plate. Given this task definition, one of the inductive biases that we study decomposes manipulation trajectories into two phases of reasoning. An alignment phase, where a policy positions the end effector relative to the target object. And an interaction phase, where another policy performs the precise manipulation. Typical approaches use a single policy to learn entire manipulation trajectories. In contrast, our decomposition-based methods use two specialized policies deployed sequentially. One optimized for aligning with objects and the other for interacting with them. We study trajectory decomposition and its impact on learning everyday manipulation tasks as we independently scale two different dimensions of learning. The first is the dataset diversity. For this, we distribute a fixed budget of demonstrations across an increasing number of tasks. The second is learning efficiency, where we vary the number of demonstrations the robot receives per task for a fixed number of tasks. The x-axis of the plot on the right shows the number of demonstrations per task decreasing from left to right, corresponding an increase in efficiency. As part of our study, we compare a standard end-to-end -end behavioral cloning implementation, which we refer to as monolithic, to two instances of that same implementation, each used to learn either an alignment or an interaction policy, which will get deployed sequentially, resulting in what we refer to as decomposed. When keeping the number of tasks approximately constant, both approaches decrease in performance as we decrease the number of demonstrations per task. Regardless, trajectory decomposition still offers performance gains across all tested regimes. In contrast, when distributing a fixed demonstration budget across an increasing number of tasks, the two approaches show conflicting scaling trends. On the one hand, 
Conventional end-to-end -end behavioral cloning improves in performance as we scale dataset diversity. On the other hand, decomposing into two sequential policies shows the opposite scaling trend, decreasing in performance. This suggests that when it is possible to collect many demonstrations per task, keeping a single monolithic policy is the preferred solution. Additionally, introducing more variety of tasks in the dataset can further improve its learning capabilities. However, when the demonstrations per task are only few, decomposing the same method to tackle the two trajectory phases independently will significantly improve performance. Interestingly, the decomposed approach will suffer from an increase in data diversity, but even with high diversity, its absolute performance is still expected to be higher than the monolithic counterpart when demonstrations per task are scarce. These are only a fraction of the insights that we have gained from our experiments, and the results shown here corresponded to only 800 out of the 5,600 real-world experimental rollouts that we have conducted. To learn more about the effect of the alignment interaction decomposition and the different design choices within this framework on learning efficiency, we invite you to read our paper and to check out our website. Thank you very much for listening.